So hello and uh, welcome to this uh, discussion about uh, a special type of right triangle with uh, angle measures of 30, 60, and 90 degrees. So this is a special right triangles um, and every special right triangle has a relationship between the three sides here. Okay, so unlike a 45, 45, 90 triangle, all three of these sides are different lengths. We still have our hypotenuse, of course. The hypotenuse is always the longest of the three legs and is always across from your 90 degree angle. Okay, across from the 30 degree angle, we find the short side of the short leg because these are different lengths. So I'm going to call this one the short leg and this one naturally might be called the long leg. So here we have um, <clears throat> the three different lengths of a 30, 60, 90 triangle. Okay, hypotenuse, of course, is the longest leg and then you have the short, which is across from the 30 and the long, which is across from the 60. Now, of course, the hypotenuse is the longest. This is just the long leg. So you want to memorize this relationship and recognize when to use it. Okay, so you can use it anytime there's a 30 degree angle, a 60 degree angle, and a 90 degree angle within a right triangle. So without further ado, here is the relationship. We start with the smallest side or the short side, and everything else gets built off of that. So the short leg is some length, whatever it happens to be. Okay, it turns out that the hypotenuse of a 30, 60, 90 is always two times as long as the short leg. So if our short leg is five units long, our hypotenuse is 10 units long. If our short leg is 92, our hypotenuse is 184. Okay, or if our hypotenuse is 20 units long, our short leg is 10. So there's always a doubling from your short leg to your hypotenuse. Okay, and then there's the long leg. Now, as in all special right triangles, we have a radical relationship. The short leg, or rather the long leg, is the short length times the square root of 3. Okay, so all 30, 60, 90s here, these are all multiples of 3. So we can think of it as um, a bunch of 3 triangles. So the hypotenuse is two times as long as the short leg, and the long leg is the short leg times root three. So it's root three times as long. Okay, and if we did Pythagorean theorem, we could verify that is the case with x and two x and x roots of three. Okay, it turns out that that is always gonna be true, which you can do on your own if you want to, but this one is about examples. So in each of these next problems, I'm gonna give you one side, and we're gonna calculate the other two sides using that relationship. So in this problem, I have a short leg of nine units long. And if we remember, the hypotenuse is two times as long as the short leg. So this one will be 18 units long. Okay, we don't need to calculate anything. This is the relationship always between a 30, 60, 90 triangle. So if we have a short leg of nine, we have a hypotenuse of 18, and we automatically have a long leg of nine roots of three. Okay. So yes, you can use your calculator to approximate what this length actually is, but um, we don't really care because nine roots of three is such a nice answer that we're just gonna leave it like that and move on. Okay, so here's another example. I'm gonna give you one side. In this case, we know the hypotenuse. So if we have a hypotenuse of 24, the first thing we wanna calculate is the short side. So the hypotenuse is two times as long as the short side, so we want to divide the hypotenuse by two in order to calculate that short side. So hypotenuse of 24 gives us a short leg of 12, and then we can calculate the long leg because that is 12 times the square root of three. <clears throat> okay, usually your teacher wants you to leave it in simplest radical forms when we're doing these, so a radical is a pretty good answer to have when we're finding the long leg of a 30, 60, 90 triangle. Okay, another example, what if we had the long leg of seven roots of three? So remember, the long leg is whatever the short leg is times root three. So our short leg must be just seven because that will fit the pattern, that will fit the relationship that the long leg is the short times the square root of three. And once we know the short leg, we can calculate the hypotenuse two times the short leg is going to be 14 units long. So those are some basic problems with basic things um, that you need to know. Okay, that's the relationship between these three, 
memorize them and recognize when to use it. So here I'm giving you a hypotenuse of 18 roots of 5, or 18 times the square root of 5. So the first thing we want to do is figure out what the short leg is. Okay, and the short leg is always half of the hypotenuse. So half of 18 roots of 5. Okay, radicals divide by radicals, numbers divide numbers. So we can simplify 18 divided by 2 is 9 roots of 5. Okay, so because we divide it by a number, you only divide the number. We don't divide the radical by a number. Those are not like terms. Now that we know what the short leg is, we can calculate the long leg. So that's 9 roots of 5 times root 3. So this we can simplify also. Radicals multiply to radicals. So we can simplify this as 9 roots of 5 times 3, since this is multiplication. 5 times 3 is 15. Okay, and if you really want to figure out what this is as a, on the calculator, just, just go ahead and figure it out and you can decimal approximate it. But 9 roots of 15 is an excellently fine answer. Okay, 15 is a non-simplifiable radical, so this is good. Okay, 9 roots of 15. Oh, here I have a short leg of 6 roots of 3. So let's calculate our hypotenuse. The hypotenuse is always 2 times. So if I have 6 roots of 3 times 2, 2 times 6 roots of 3, remember numbers multiply to numbers, not to radicals. 2 times 6 is 12, and we still have our roots of 3. Okay, numbers multiply to other numbers, radicals multiply to other radicals. So when I come down to here, I'm going to do the short leg which is 6 roots of 3 by itself. And I'm going to multiply that by another root 3 because it's short leg times root 3. Now remember, radicals multiply to radicals. So this root 3 multiplies to the other root 3. So 6 times the square root of 9. Okay, now hopefully you recognize this root 9. Root 9 is a very special radical because 9 is a perfect square. So rather than root 9, we can write the actual number 3, because the square root of 9 is the value 3. So 6 times 3 becomes 18, and 18 becomes the length of the long leg. Okay, so remember, numbers multiply to numbers, so 2, 6 root 3s is 12 roots of 3. Radicals multiply to radicals, so here the 6 stays alone and you multiply root 3 times root 3 which is just 3, so we have a long leg of 18. Okay, so it's a little bit of radical algebra in there. Not that algebra is radical, but algebra with radicals. So here I have a hypotenuse of 9 root 3. So once again, I'm going to take half of it, divide it by 2, because the hypotenuse is 2 times as long as the short leg. Now because this is not a whole number, you're often going to see it written as a just a mixed radical fraction. 9 roots of 3 divided by 2. Rather than as 4.5 roots of 3. Sometimes you might see 4.5 roots of 3, but more often than not, you're going to see 9 roots of 3 divided by 2. Okay, so now that we have that, just, it's just a fraction. We don't actually have to do any simplifying because it's, it's not pretty. So now we're going to figure out what the long leg is. So 9 roots of 3 divided by 2 times root 3. Now when we multiply a fraction times a number, and this is a number of course, we multiply across the numerator and don't multiply to the denominator. So we can think of this as being over 1. So the top multiplies to the top and the bottom multiplies to the bottom. So 9 roots of, here we have root 3 times root 3, over 2. Okay, we can simplify this, of course. 9 roots of 9 over 2. So just like before, the square root of 9 is the number 3. So 9 times 3, am I off the screen here? Oh, I guess I am. Let me come back over to here. 
9 roots of 3, sorry, not root of 3 anymore, just 9 times 3, because the square root of 9 is 3, sorry. So 9 times 3 over 2, and now we just need to simplify, sorry, 27, 18, what kind of craziness is that? 27 over 2, which is a perfectly good answer. You can leave it like this if you want to. I would be happy if my students did that. Or they could write it as 13.5, which is okay. There's not a radical attached to it. So 13.5 would also be an acceptable answer for this problem. Okay, so remember, times when you multiply a fraction times a number, you only multiply across the top. And in this case, we can simplify a little bit to get 13.5 or 27 halves if you like it that way. So what if we have a whole number hypotenuse? Okay, This is the trickiest of the values here when we have a whole number hypotenuse. Okay, Figuring out what the short leg is. So if we go back a couple slides, notice here we ended up with a whole number hypotenuse and we started with the radical 3 as the short leg. Okay, here we have sort of a whole number hypotenuse. It doesn't have a radical with it. And we had a radical 3 as the short leg. So we're going to have, and anytime you have a whole number hy sorry, this is not a hypotenuse. This is a whole number long leg. Anytime we have a whole number long leg, we're going to divide that number by 3 and multiply by root 3 in order for us to be able to undo what we just did a second ago. So 12 divided by 3 times root 3. Always divide by 3 and multiply by root 3. In this case, 12 divided by 3 is actually 4. So we get a nice, pretty radical here, 4 roots of 3. Because once we know the short side, we can find out what the hypotenuse is. The hypotenuse in this case is going to be 8 roots of 3, because 8 is double. So be careful and be aware when you have a whole number hypotenuse, you're going to have a radical 3 in your other legs. Okay, so once again, here I have a 10, a whole number long leg. So we apply that relationship. Divide by 3, multiply by root 3. So here, 10 divided by 3, roots of 3 cannot be simplified. 10 and 3 don't divide nicely. They do divide, but we'll just leave it as 10 roots of 3 over 3. So 10 thirds roots of 3 is a perfectly fine answer. No, it might not look pretty, but it's a fantastic answer. If you want to know what the decimal is, of course, your calculator can tell you that. But to find the hypotenuse, we times by 2. 10 roots of 3 over 3 times 2. Two of these, remember, so when we multiply, you do number times the numerator. So if I were going to do 2 times 10 roots of 3, that would end me up with 20 roots of 3. And then, of course, I divide that by the numerator, the denominator, 3. And that is your hypotenuse length. Okay, so no, not pretty looking, but an excellent mathematical answer that if you want to, you can figure out on your calculator if you want a decimal approximation. Okay, so a couple more problems. Here I have a two roots of six as my short leg. So my hypotenuse is gonna be four roots of six and my long leg is gonna be two roots of six times root three. So let's see what happens. Root 6 times root 3, of course, you multiply radicals times radicals. 6 times 3 is 18. And 18 you should recognize as being a simplifiable radical. So 18 is the square root of 9 times the square root of 2. Okay, anytime you have a number under the radical called the radicand, anytime the radicand is divisible by a perfect square, you should be simplifying it. So the square root of 9 is the number 3, and your root 2 will stay there. So our final answer of 2 times 3 is 6 times the square root of 2 will be the length of that long leg. 
Okay, so once again, just some algebra with radicals, or some operations, rather, with radicals. So simplifying a radical that has a perfect square as one of its factors. Okay, and then a couple of um, application problems. So what is the height of an equilateral triangle? Equilateral, you should know, has three equal sides with a perimeter of 18. So let's draw our little equilateral triangle here and talk about what happens with equilateral triangles. So equilateral triangles have, of course, three equal sides. And because they have three equal sides, they also have three equal angles. And each of these angles are 60 degrees because they're all equal. 180 divided by 3 is 360. So if I have a perimeter of 18, that means each of these sides must be 6 units long six units long because they're all the same so 18 divided by 3 gives you a perimeter of 16 so I am asked for the height so the height of this equilateral triangle does two things number one it bisects this side as all isosceles triangles do it bisects the side so number one this is now three units and of course on this side you also have three units because the side gets bisected. Now what else it does, it creates a 60 degree angle and a 90 degree angle. So we have ourselves a 30, 60, 90 special right triangle. So we could use Pythagoras now that we know we have a side, a hypotenuse of 6 and a short leg of 3. But if we know the relationship, then the height becomes apparent right away. The height of this triangle is the long leg of a 30, 60, 90. Okay, do you recognize this? So here's your hypotenuse, here's three. So the hypotenuse is twice as long as three. So that means this is the short leg, which means this has to be the long leg. So if I have a short leg of three, that means I have a height of three roots of three. So it's really nice. You don't have to do much math, quote unquote math at all, as long as you recognize the relationship. Recognize this is a 30, 60, 90 triangle and remember the relationship. Okay, now we can calculate this if you want to. It's, uh, 3 times 3 square root equals, equals, hmm, I didn't like it. 3 square root times 3 about 5.196 centimeters long. If you were going to be actually measuring something and cutting, you'd want the 5.196. But for math, this um, 3 roots of 3 is a perfectly good answer. Okay, so one other um, application question. The height of an equilateral triangle is 8 inches. So once again, we have an equilateral triangle. Let's draw that in here. We have a height of 8 inches. Oops, that one didn't touch, but we'll be okay. So we know this is 8 inches. What's the area of the triangle? So area is a formula, 1 half of the base length times the height. So we need to calculate this base. If this is your height, then the base has to be perpendicular to the height. Okay, so we already have half the information we need that being the height. We know the height is 8. We have to calculate this base length. So let's see what we know. Equilateral triangle, we have three equal sides. This is a 60 degree angle. So we have ourselves a 30, 60, 90 special right triangle with a height or a long leg of 8. So remember the height of an equilateral triangle is the long leg of a 30, 60, 90. So if we remember the relationship, if we have a whole number long leg, we have to divide this by 3 and times it by root 3. So if I had an 8, that would be 8 roots of 3 divided by 3 as just the short leg. So from here over to here is 8 roots of 3 divided by 3. Okay, but because the base of this triangle goes the whole entire way over, I should know to double that. 
okay, because this is only half of it. So my base is going to be 16 roots of 3 divided by 3 units long. And that's what we're going to use over here. 16 roots of 3 divided by 3. So we're going to do as much as we can without a calculator. So let's see here. When I'm multiplying all of this, it's pretty easy to take half of 8. right? So if I take half of 8, that's 4 times 16 roots of 3 over 3. 4 times 16 is um, 64, I believe, times the square root of 3 over 3. Uh, 64 does not divide nicely by 3, so we'll just call this right here the answer. 64 times the square root of 3 divided by 3 is the area of that triangle. Now let's come over here and calculate. I'll touch my calculator button so we can see what it is as a decimal, just in case you would like to do that. So I have the square root of 3, timesing that by 64 get this number and then we divide that by 3 and we get an approximate area of 36.95 square inches. Okay, So hopefully that clears up a couple of things or teaches you about the 30, 60, 90 triangle. Okay, Memorize the relationship and recognize when to use it. Anytime we have an equilateral triangle you're going to be making 30, 60, 90s and using that relationship within half of the triangle. Okay? Hope you had a fantastic time. If you want to re-watch re 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 and uh, pause and work through some of these problems, it might be helpful to you. So uh, thanks a lot. Have a good day.